the red tower where I strolled along the river are and Lava. but the other changing is rising Hey there, I'm so happy to see you again and I'd like to thank everyone who subscribes to my channel. However, if you haven't subscribed yet and click the bell icon, then please do it now. Alright, in this video I'm going to tell you about whether or not a day trip around Switzerland is worth doing. And if yes, how many cities you can visit within a day. Well, before traveling, it is important to have your itineraries ready like which cities you are about to visit, how many hours you want to spend in each city, who are you going with, and most important thing is that how you can get a day pass ticket for all types of public transport. In my case, I started from Geneva, Lausanne, Fribourg, Thun and ended in Interlaken. It's true that the train stopped over in Lausanne but I didn't get off and visit the city because I've been there before. Instead, it fetched my traveling partner and our first city to visit was Fribourg. Fribourg is commonly known as a university town with many students from all over the world, making this a cosmopolitan, multifaceted mini metropolis. The narrow streets in the old town are tightly packed with little boutiques antique shops, many students' cafes and restaurants offering local and foreign specialties. Town walls that are more than 2 kilometers long were used to protect the city in the past, like Rumno of the walls, turrets and bastions are still preserved. The red tower where I am making this film was also used by guardians of the medieval city. Most impressive, however, is the St. Nicholas Cathedral. I've heard that it has extraordinarily beautiful stained glass windows. Construction started in 1283 and continued in several stages. This tower is 74 meter high that offers a fantastic panoramic view. Unfortunately, we arrived much in advance so we couldn't enter the cathedral and climbed up the tower. Maybe next time we revisit this town. We walked up to the house of nun and took this picture overlooking of the Saint Nicholas Cathedral and this one was taken from the red tower where you can see how the town looks. In fact, there are still many things to discover but hey, the weather was not very supportive so we decided to go back to the train station and took a train to Thun. We expected that the weather would be good as soon as we arrived in the city. Thun is a city in the canton of Bern. Its most famous landmark is the medieval castle above the town. Before going up to the castle, visitors have to cross one of the bridges over the river Ar, past the old town, walk up the stairs and steep pedestrians. A great thing to tell you is that the weather was nice, yet not 100% perfect. Oberreslause is one of the wooden bridges which was built in the 18th century. It connects to an island and people use it from the old city to the train station, vice versa. Both sides of the bridge have flowers that are hanging to beautify the look. Along the river R, we saw some people chill out at cafes and restaurants. It was lunchtime, so no wonder there were many people eating, drinking outside and enjoying good weather simultaneously. As tourists, we skipped our lunch time and continued on strolling in the, in the old town. The historical raised promenades in Thun's old town are yet another highlight, but they are not the only reason to enjoy a stroll through the cobblestone streets, as well as traditional rows of houses. Thun is home to various small shops on different levels that encourage visitors to explore. From the old town, we took these stairs to visit the castle of Thun. We didn't count how many steps in the stairs, but it was really pleasant to get to the top. There's a cave in the castle area, an old cannon, a heavy piece of artillery, and kind of well that's no longer be functioned. We didn't buy the ticket to get into the tower of this castle because the sky was not clear enough to see 
the beautiful panoramic view. However, from this altitude, we can see the city, the lake, and the river R. On our way back to the train station, we stroll along the river R and the lakeside. And from this lakeside, we can see the Shadow Castle and its park where people stroll around it. We love this beautiful city, but we couldn't stay much longer. Instead of going back to the train station on foot, we took a boat to save time and energy. On the boat, I said goodbye with my gesture to people I saw. We got off the boat and got on the train to take us to visit our third city, Interlaken. The city's name is derived from Latin, Interlagas, which means between the lakes. As we arrived at Interlaken Ost station, we then took a bus to the next three stops before reaching the lake. Exercising the latest technology, Google Map, we found the lake without a problem, where, you know, I interviewed Wasim in regard to the requirements of employment and its processes. This lake is kinda hidden lake because it's located behind the farming area. I guess it could be a perfect spot to spend time in summer. After interviewed, we managed to arrive at a funicular station and then we went up to Hardakul. Return ticket is 17 Swiss francs with yearly subscription card or abonnement general in Swiss French language. It took about 10 minutes to get to the top and go down to the main funicular station. From the mountain station, an easy path leads to the inviting panoramic restaurants in just 5 minutes. With its turret and red tiled roof, the building resembles a mini fairy tale castle. The restaurant Santuras is a great place to unwind. If you are lucky, you can get a very nice view with sun around you. The Hardakulm is the ideal destination for gourmet, fans of great views, spot people, hikers, and nature lovers. At 1,322 meters above sea level, the Hardakulm, the nearest mountain to Interlaken, promises overwhelming views of Interlaken and the peaks of the Eger, Mons, and Jungfrau only if you are lucky. For example, the sky was not 100% clear, so it was impossible for us to obviously see the other mountains. But the overchanging Zweizinsteg, or Two Lakes Bridge in English, allowed us to take some photos, videos with more panoramic views and enjoy our coffee with cakes. We wanted to stay longer and chit chat with a group of at least 8 Indonesian tourists who we met coincidentally in the Harderkulm but we had to return to our places. So yeah, it's really worth doing a day trip around Switzerland guys. Next time, your turn. In regard to one day pass ticket for all types of public transport, you can get it online from Swiss train website, either way you can buy directly from the municipality. In our case, we bought directly from the Swiss train website because it was very convenient for us. However, beware of the terms and conditions, right? As you got one day pass ticket, what I can suggest you is that you start your day tour around Switzerland from 6 o'clock in the morning, have your breakfast, lunch, dinner somewhere to the latest possible hour before returning home. So, please check your train schedule and now you know that planning becomes one of the success factors in making your day tour in Switzerland. Alright, if you like this video, please don't hesitate to click subscribe, press the bell icon, comments and share it with your friends. I'm Didi, thanks a lot for watching and supporting this channel. And I see you again soon.